So, 100,000 subscribers. As, as I've said when I had like 10,000, this is beyond my wildest expectations. Like, I, I can barely articulate the feelings. But you probably don't care about that. Right now, you care about what I decided to do for it. It's something a little different, although I've been planning to do this for a while, actually. People generally want to know what the worst stuff I've ever seen is, and sometimes it's hard to judge. What I've done is decide to make a few top 10 lists. Top 10 worst cartoons of each respective decade. We'll start with the 2000s, and we'll work our way backwards. I'm definitely going to do the 90s, probably going to do the 80s, not sure about the 70s, and before then, it's kind of complicated. A few rules, though. Number one, I can't just say certain seasons of a show. It's either the entire show or none of it, unless the show spans multiple decades. For example, if I chose SpongeBob for this list, I'd have to include the entire show from 2000 to 2009. Another rule, the show must have at least 13 episodes fully produced and aired to prevent weird and obscure things and drop pilots, and also stopping my number one choice of adult party cartoons to be completely fucking obvious. Also, no internet animation. But, uh, I do not like the 2000s decade for animation. Actually, that that's not far enough. It might be my least favorite decade of animation of all time, only rivaled by the 70s. Yes, it was home to some of my favorite animated series of all times, but a lot of my most hated. From 2000 to 2004, things were actually pretty good, but after that, the quality of cartoons in general dropped hard until at least 2008, probably 2010. In between that time, the only really good show to watch was probably Avatar. I've already talked about how Nickelodeon fell from grace around this time, but Cartoon Network was equally bad, throwing up shit like reality TV and poorly planned out game shows designed to pander to kids. All the networks were sticking to their cash cow franchises like SpongeBob or Johnny Tess, and had very little resources to give to anything else. And then there was the rise of Flash Animation. Flash Animation was a tool that allowed cartoons to be made a lot quicker and a lot more cheaply. Some shows did amazing things with it. Most did not. And, uh, I'm not even touching movies for this one. Yeah, of the three decades that I've been alive, this has definitely been my least favorite in terms of animation. I will say right now, though, we are currently doing a whole lot better in the 2010s, even with a dud here and there. The crap isn't as common or even as bad as it was here. If you're ready, we're counting down the top 10 worst cartoons of the 2000s decade. Let me get this out of the way right this second before you do anything serious. SpongeBob SquarePants is not going to be on this list. This is for a couple of reasons. Number one, if I chose it, I'd have to include most of the good episodes too. And number two, most of the worst episodes of SpongeBob aired in 2010 or later. I mean, A Pal for Gary aired January 2nd, 2010, if you want to judge things that way. And considering that I've been around the block, it has come to my attention that there are many, many worse things than SpongeBob, even modern SpongeBob. What I'm saying is fight the real enemy. They say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but flat out ripping off is the sincerest form of insult. Remember when I reviewed Bubsy from like forever ago? Well, the character was played by Rob Paulson, a very talented and famous voice actor. I bring him up because this is the role that he hated doing the most, more than Bubsy. And yeah, I can totally say it with this annoying protagonist. The only reason that this show is number 10 is because it's the only one that I could sit through for more than one episode at a time. I'm used to bad SpongeBob. And almost everything on this list is also soulless crap. At least this one has some fucking energy. So we have an in-universe annoying character whose main body type is a simple geometric shape. The show has a weird concept that didn't really come out of logic. There is also an arrogant character who seems to like peace and quiet and is constantly annoyed by the main character's antics, and frequently suffers pain and abuse because of it. Oh, and in one episode, the main character inflates to solve a problem. There's also another side character who is really exceptionally tiny. Oh, and he's got a couple of friends who are really, really stupid. And that's just on the concept level of the show. I've seen every single joke on the show in SpongeBob in one form or another. Oh, but I take that back. There is some originality. Instead of one really stupid character, we get two. I don't know why networks keep trying this, but it's generally not a good idea to have a protagonist where the lives of everyone else would be better if they just didn't exist. Yes, SpongeBob delved into this eventually, but that wasn't the original concept. From my experience, these shows never work unless the main character constantly loses like an Ed, Ed and Eddie. It's not funny to watch one guy continually ruin other people's lives. Beyond that, none of the characters that aren't direct rehashes from SpongeBob have a strong personality. They're often just given one solitary trait and do nothing else. Whenever Fred is on stage, you know that something bad 
bad is going to happen. And all too often, you know exactly what it is, because this show doesn't have a creative bone in its body. Look, if you want to watch Fred Stick here, go watch SpongeBob. It's better paced, more original, and better comedy. Now, my own rules prevent me from putting a dull party cartoon on this list. Thank the Lord. But I don't really want my number one to be completely obvious. I do want to bring it up, though. In that show, from what I can gather, the network forced John Kay to throw in a bunch of vulgar shit because they thought it would sell better. The other show he did in the 2000s kind of has the opposite problem. The network censors were very harsh on the ripping friends. They decided that in order for the show to be successful, everything and everyone needed to be perfectly on model. The show was made by a guy who didn't use the same facial expression for his characters twice. Look, I'm not the biggest fan of Gross Out, but when you design a show to be something, you should at least let the show be that thing. Don't get John K to do your show if you don't want it to be gross and vulgar. Uh, that's kind of what he does. What we have here is a neutered mess that the creator doesn't even want to acknowledge exists. I really don't have enough time to explain exactly why it doesn't work here, but it's a show that had its most important element surgically removed. This is something that deserves its own full review. Personally, I don't like Gross Out. This show doesn't have any Gross Out in it. If they added more Gross Out, sure, I would have liked it less, but at least someone would have liked it. Even with no Gross Out, I still don't like the show, obviously. If what I've heard about the behind-the-scenes efforts of Adult Party Cartoon are true, then I do feel really sorry for John Kay. He was one of the most influential animators of the 90s, but by the turn of the century, he got screwed over by the network twice, and hasn't really been able to do much since. He needs to rely on a Kickstarter now to get his own cartoon made. Keep in mind that me and the guy have two widely different schools of thought when it comes to cartoons, and I do know about his reputation of being hard to work with. Personally, I'm not even a fan of pretty much any of his work. I still believe he deserved better than what the network did to this. I, uh, I'm sorry. A lot of people like this show, but I absolutely cannot stand it. The 2000s were a terrible decade for adult animation in particular. You want some dishonorable mentions for this list? Try every single cartoon from Spike TV's animation block. Granted, every so often you get something as poignant as Boondocks or as timeless as God the Devil and Bob, but 9 times out of 10, you got a show that wanted nothing more than to be South Park. They wanted to steal all of its success and reputation, but they didn't want to put any effort into it, so they relied on being crude, crass, and vulgar. Drawn Together built itself as the first animated reality TV show, because comparing yourself to reality television really is a selling point. Granted, Total Drama did this later on, but I think they did that quite a bit better. Total Drama wanted to be Survivor, one of the highest rated and most successful reality television shows out there. Drawn Together wanted to be the fucking Jersey Shore, a household with assholes being assholes to each other. The cartoonish edge is that each character came from a different genre or era of cartoons, and their personalities are incredibly dull or incredibly one note. Oh my god, the video game hero that resembles Link? He's gay. Oh my god, the Disney princess is racist. The plots? They're not much better. The first episode constantly tries to gross you out. The second episode is so referenced overdosed that it makes Seltzer and Friedberg blush, including an ending that rips off Shrek. Yeah, they try to be subversive. In the end, True Love's curse doesn't turn the suitor into an ogre, it turns his genitalia into an octopus just like the princess. You can't be subversive if your source material was already subversive. You cannot parody a parody, it doesn't work like that. The jokes are either too vulgar, too stupid, or too cliche. And there's one more thing about the show that bothers me. It's it's the voice acting. All of the voice actors are very professional, but they were given absolutely no direction to differentiate themselves from their other roles. Wanna know what I'm talking about? Listen to this. I'm glad you're finally here. Would you be a dear and fetch my bags, servant girl? Excuse me? What did you just call me? Servant girl! Oh, many pardons, or my bad. What do you people call yourselves these days? Mammy? Mooly? Sometimes I cut myself to relieve the pain! <laughs> That's just about the worst theme song I've ever heard in my life. How could the Scooby spin-off with the best theme song ever be followed by the one with the worst? If you do, I will shoot you. In the face. The theme song matches the overall quality, though. The animation follows the 2000s trend of using Flash to cut corners. This is not what Flash animation is for. It allows you to animate quickly so you can animate better and animate more. 
If the tool is used correctly, then Flash looks and does more than hand-drawn animation. When it's not used correctly, you look lazy, cause you are lazy. The character designs here look absolutely horrible. They're based on the actors from the live-action movies. Hey, the bad 2000s trends are just piling up here, aren't they? The voice acting is not much better. This is one of the few shaggy roles not played by the legendary DJ Casey Kasem, who passed away last year. If this spin-off is any indication, then he will never be replaced. Christ, I haven't even gotten to the actual show yet. This spin-off takes genius inspiration from the Black Sheep era of the franchise, and only stars Shaggy and Scooby. It's okay though, Fred, Daphne, and Velma make cameos, saying that they can help at any point, and then we never see them again! Instead, Shaggy and Scooby end up acting like their friends. Oh my god, it's Planet Sheen all over again. So the plot of the series is that Shaggy's Uncle Albert, who suspiciously looks like the villain from Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, has given him a billion dollars. Actually, no, that's just something that happens. The show is actually about magical Scooby snacks that give Scooby superpowers. Because making non-superpowered characters superheroes is how you do a successful spin-off. Because this show totally knows what Scooby-Doo is about, the overall villain of the series is revealed straight out in the first episode. The only way that the spin-off could be worse is if Scrappy-Doo was involved. No, instead we get this fucking robot, who's almost as annoying. What else can I say? I'm not even gonna beat around the bush, you knew it was coming, Lunatics Unleashed! Yeah, I can't mention one terrible spin-off without bringing up the other. Just like taking superheroes and making them 100% comedic doesn't work out, taking 100% comedic characters and making them superheroes doesn't work either. I'm just saying, this show is not playing to its strengths. Now, here's the strange thing about Lunatics Unleashed. I wouldn't actually mind if they wanted to do a pure superhero show, but they don't. First off, the action is pretty much a ripoff of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ace is pretty much Michelangelo with the powers of Cyclops. Which reminds me, none of the powers are unique, and they don't do any unique variations on any of them. Neither are the characters. Oh, your super speedy character is hyper? Your super strength guy is pretty beastly and almost feral? I've seen it before! As a pure action show, it's overshadowed by all of its contemporaries. Like, the Teen Titans! As a comedic superhero show, it's overshadowed by all of its contemporaries. Like, the Teen Titans! No, seriously, every joke from the first episode of Lunatics Unleashed is ripped off from earlier Looney Tunes shorts, in a desperate plea to remind the audience that this is still Looney Tunes. The original Looney Tunes were timeless. This is nothing. It's a half-formed pile of crap. It doesn't know what it wants to be. It cannot be a pure comedy, because a pure comedy with the exact same setup each and every time is going to get stale very quickly. It can't be a pure superhero show because it's the fucking Looney Tunes! For some ungodly reason, this show demands to be taken seriously, as an action show. People take the Looney Tunes seriously as staples of cartoon comedy. They invented pretty much every trick in the book and have perfected each device that we still use today. The makers of Looney Tunes wanted to throw this away for what? To be temporarily popular? Maybe this was just a giant joke. It feels like that sitcom episode where the main character completely throws out their personality to try and fit in with a cool crowd. Like always, it just ends in embarrassment. Okay, I've been a little harsh. It's not like all the trends in the 2000s were bad. I mean, no decade is made of purely bad trends. That would be ludicrous, and it would probably kill off the medium entirely. And one good thing that we got was increased exposure to anime. Even Western cartoons started getting some anime influences, like Avatar or Samurai Jack. This was the first time many kids in the West were exposed to anime beyond something from Studio Ghibli. Of course, most kids in the United States didn't speak Japanese, so it needed to be dubbed. One company arose, and their name still sends shivers down an anime lover's spine. I present four kids. Four Kids is fucking awful. Even their name is fucking awful and just says everything I don't like about this company. This is what happens when the kids are stupid and animation is only for kids mentalities get out of hand. Not all Four Kids dubs are awful, but they all have questionable decisions. Why do you keep changing rice balls? Is there some sort of religious majority in the United States that is against people eating balls of rice? Are you afraid of people thinking that these shows take place somewhere other than America? That yellow mouse thing just electrocuted someone. I know that the show doesn't take place in America. Or do you think the kids are too stupid to understand the deep, intrinsic cultural attitudes of Japanese people eating rice? I mean, at least these shows were already meant for kids. God forbid if four kids ever got a hold of something made for adults. God damn it.
for kids, a company that works heavily with animation and with anime brought us this disaster piece. In Japan, even cartoons aimed towards kids can be a lot more openly adult. But being a company that dubs Japanese anime into English, four kids didn't understand any of Japanese culture, or the fact that cartoons could be for anyone older than seven. What they did was took an anime that would be aimed at ages 15 and up in America, and edited it down to be acceptable for seven-year-olds. After the One Piece manga was already released in the United States, four kids literally knew nothing about the show, but thought it would be good for kids thinking that they could just make a quick buck with a few edits and get rid of all of the rice balls. I don't have time here to go into all of the crazy changes and edits, but there are places on the internet that you can find them. All I could say is thank God for Funimation, because this shit is inexcusable. I'm not kidding, everything about this dubbing disgusts me on a visceral level. Not knowing or caring about Japanese culture, despite dubbing from that language and that culture, knowing nothing about the original source material, caring for nothing but profits, insulting the intelligence of kids, and insulting the intelligence of fans of the source material, and that god-awful rap theme. Hey look, you want my opinion of the show without the rhyming gimmick? This is one of the most ill-formed cartoons ever made. It does literally everything wrong. Every character is annoying. The bad guy always wins, every single time. The good guy isn't even that good in comparison. The plots do nothing new or original. There's random bouts of gross out. The character designs are lazy, and they only stand out because of that stupid line gimmick. The plots are stupid. Have you noticed anything? Yeah. I've laid these complaints about so many other shows before this because nothing about the show is original. It doesn't even fail in a unique or original way. For me to review the show, I had to do something different, or else I'd just be repeating myself and the review would be useless. When I rewatched each of the shows to the list, I wrote a bunch of notes. Every note I wrote about this show basically amounted to every character is unlikable for the sake of being unlikable. The only remotely likable character constantly loses. The voice acting is bad. That's not even bringing up the episode I reviewed with that weird drug allegory. Another episode is about Lucian having a crush, and it starts by the teacher reading about how a black widow eats their mate. Does it have anything to do with the episode, tone or otherwise? Not at all. Guys, I, I think the show wanted to be Invader Zim, but it's not. Random secondary characters dropping from the sky, but I've said that before. But like I said, it's not even good at failing. It's not just bad. It's boringly bad. <laughs> Funny story, the owners of Pixel Pinky actually copyrighted claims my original review. I fought it and I got it back up because they would have to sue me in America and they're an Australian company, but still, if this video goes anywhere, you'll know why. Unfortunately for the owners of Pixel Pinky, this show just had to make the list. You think the Johnny Test is lazy? You haven't seen Pixel Pinky. This is the laziest piece of animation I've ever seen. Okay, that's not true. But I'm pretty sure that this show came out on an experiment to figure out exactly how little effort you needed to put into a cartoon to get it on television. This was animated in Go Animate. You'd have to break any other application to get it to animate this fucking bad. The characters are bland. The only trait that Nina has is that she's into basketball. The plots are ripped from Fairly Odd Parents, as is the concept, but the show is even more formulaic. Nina knows that using magic is stupid, or she's too stupid to realize that she can use magic, then she uses magic when she figures it out, or the plot demands her to get stupid enough to use the magic, and the magic always backfires because Pixel Pinky interprets it wrong. Besides cloning, there's an episode where Nina wants to get taller. She becomes a giant. Every plot is like that in some way, shape, or form. And it's on the most overdone plot types. The other characters, you got the typical hippie, the typical mom, the typical best friend, the typical love interest, the typical bully, who started bullying Nina because she didn't have a fucking cell phone. Ha ha ha. Most of the shit on this list is just lazy, generic, and soulless in order to make a quick profit. But this is the laziest cash in that I've ever seen. I do not believe that humans with a functioning brain ever considered the idea that on its own that can make a profit. On the bright side, this show has one of the best messages I've ever seen. Anyone can get their fucking show on television. You don't even need to put in any effort into it. Uh, Tony Hawk it later. What? Like, like, like what? The Boom Crew is one of the most unbearable shows I've ever seen. It's top 10 bad. I'm not even kidding here. I know what you're saying. Only four episodes were ever aired, so this show can't be on the list. Nope. All 13 episodes were actually aired on television. In England. Because it was originally cancelled four episodes in, in the United States. I'd say that the characters speak in outdated slang, but it's more like they're speaking in gibberish. No one ever talked like this. Not kids. Not rappers. Not aliens badly misinterpreting human culture. Yo, you better get out of my house before I Jackie Chan your ass and make you Adam Sandler this place. And you think that's bad, I'll Sean Connery your house and Charlie Sheen it up. 
Does that sound incomprehensible? That's because it fucking is. Half of the dialogue is in this weird alien slang, and the other half is in puns. All the characters are pretty much tokens. The exact same token, except the girl. She's a token nerd. And you'd think that the makers of the Proud family would have a different character type than the token black character. That's literally all of the main characters except for the nerd. Instead of talking in slang, she talks in techno babble. Also, in the first episode, there's this alien who's pretty much afraid of everything and is constantly running away. The creators thought it would be a brilliant and progressive move to give him a French accent. So, how are the stories? Does this look familiar in the slightest? Yeah, all the stories pretty much rip off Samurai Jack, but instead of a heroic samurai, we've got four kids who can't speak realistic English. The actual premise behind the show is that the kids were hit by a power surge and are thrown into their video game or an alternate reality that looks exactly like their video game. I repeat, they coded the fucking game, yet things still manage to surprise them all the time. And there are things about that universe that they don't know. When I started out this list, I knew what was going to be my number one immediately. It was so painfully bad that I stopped watching it the first time four minutes in. And then I watched this show, The Nut Shack, which proved to be even worse. Let's start off with the fact that the theme song is the worst that I've heard in my life, which is always a great start. The animation is worse than Pixel Pinkies. At least Pixel Pinky could claim to have some kind of style. The characters here look like they were cut out from various other sources and just copy-pasted into a clusterfuck of design. The voice acting is terrible. I cannot understand what anyone is saying at any point. The guy with the jewelry has a sparkle effect, and it's used so much that it gets annoying and very distracting. The plots are confusing, and I have no idea what's going on in them. When they run out of steam, the show resorts to throwing literal shit at the wall. Like Da Boom Crew, it's loaded with stereotypes, despite coming from people who should know better. This was the first Filipino animated series on United States television. Yeah, that, that's a great fucking start. This show is everything wrong with animation in the 2000s. Let's see, adult cartoons that try to be vulgar, crass, and shocking? Cheap flash animation used by people who don't want to put any effort into it? Trying to pander to some random demographic because you can't hope to hit a general audience? The main characters being horribly obnoxious? Stories that make no fucking sense? Background characters that are fucking obnoxious. Oh, and as a bonus, the background music drowns out the dialogue. The designs are confusing, and the animation seems to be copy-pasted at points. Where would I put this in comparison to everything else? The Nut Shack is currently number four, behind adult party cartoon Mr. Pickles and Mega Babies. And that reminds me, I probably gotta do one of these for the 90s. And maybe at some point I'll do a top 10 favorite cartoons from the 2000s. Maybe I'll review episodes from any of these other shows that I haven't already. Right now, I don't want to do much of anything. This show is fucking horrible! You know what? No, I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch some Steven Universe or regular show. Maybe some Rick and Morty or Friendship is Magic and be glad that this decade is over! Honestly, if this list did anything, it helped me appreciate how far we have come since this decade. If you remember, in 2009, Cartoon Network, THE Cartoon Network, decided not to air any new cartoons but seven live-action shows because they thought animation was dead. Once upon a time, 90s kids did have a point because all of this soulless crap on this list. It may not have been the worst point in animation history, but it was a notoriously bad one. How did we get out? I have no fucking clue. We got Adventure Time and then everything seemed to start improving. We got Gravity Falls, Over the Garden Wall, Wander Over Yonder, and we're still getting good stuff with things like Star vs. the Forces of Evil or Sonic Boom. And I hear that Harvey Beaks is pretty good too. But doesn't this decade have crap? Of course it does. The 90s had crap too. The 80s had crap. The 70s had crap. The 60s had crap. It's just the landscape is nothing like what it once was 10 years ago. While the 2000s may have been my least favorite decade of animation, the 2010s, if they keep on this track, they could easily be my favorite. And combined with the ease of access to get whatever episodes of these shows I want, with things like Amazon and Netflix, and the crazy things people are doing with the medium on the internet, there really has been no better time to be a fan of animation than the 2010s. Sons up, I the floor. Shoes tied, I'm out the door. This is a clean shirt, I think it was one yesterday. Every day I'm on my own. No plans, I got to sell home. I call my boys up, spend a little time outside today. Never like me again when I got to Never like me and told you I got to see. I like no commitments growing up, up around me. I'm not coming in anymore. 